Hi everyone, today I thought since it's been so much in the news, everyone is talking about AI and what are the implications on humanity and what are the implications on jobs and lots of other philosophical and moral questions are being raised. And to be honest, I'm still ruminating on all of that. I have some opinions about it, but I'm not, I'm just starting to explore and really think about it. But I thought it would be interesting to ask AI to design a makeup look for me, just to see what would come up. And this was really because my husband actually has got really into chat GPT and he kept going on about it and I was sort of avoiding even looking at it. And then he was like, come and look at this. It can write this, it can write that, it can write an email. And it did slightly blow my mind. And I was thinking, well, it's not great for copywriters and people like that because it's, it can write really good text and it can write essays. Obviously it can write, do all of that stuff. But then I thought, can it design a makeup look for me? So I typed in design a makeup look for Lisa Eldridge. And this is what came up. So I printed it off and this is what it said. Lisa Eldridge is a renowned makeup artist and beauty expert. Thank you for that. So designing a makeup look for her is an exciting challenge. Then it's put a list of products, some which exist and some which don't, because they're, they're all my products, but some of them don't even exist yet with names of the products. And so that's really intriguing. And then there's a whole description for how to apply the products. And I must say the lips were, was really interesting. I'm excited how that's going to turn out. But overall, yeah, it's really kind of interesting. So the next thing it says is technique. Number one, prep the skin by cleansing, toning, and moisturizing using your preferred products. So it didn't know that I'd launched skincare yet, boo. So I'm gonna just use my mist to tone, and then I'm going to apply my moisturizer. So I'm gonna use this vent moisturizer as a prep. Step two. It says apply Lisa Eldridge foundation in shade five using a foundation brush. Blend it well into your skin, making sure there are no harsh lines. That's definitely me. That's picked up on me. Shade five. Wow. That's going to be really light for me. Here goes. Oosh. Hmm. Okay, chat GPT. What is going on here? I think we're going to have to really thin this out a lot. I'm going to go in with fingers. I know it said a brush, but I'm going to use my fingers just to take the edge off here. I'm just doing my neck as well because it's obviously a very, very light look for me. Um, so I'm going to have to blend my neck in. And I feel like it's scoured the internet and it's either found one of my historical YouTube videos where I've used a lighter shade or it's found my TV documentary or something. And it's kind of placing me in this sort of Victorian consumptive look. Or, and this is quite sinister, maybe this AI entity thinks I should be this color, knows that I'm a shade 11 and wants to make me shade five. That is creepy. Okay, let's, um, let's carry on. Step three. Conceal any blemishes and dark circles with Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Concealer in shade three. Okay, that's weird. It's either reading all the emails of the studio because it seems to know there's a concealer coming or it's been reading the comments on my Instagram, Facebook, something like that. So that actually is crazy. That's, yeah, that's blown my mind. Um, I'm going to use, I'm going to try this one Glow Hub and also this e.l.f. one because I'm, I'm so light. I want to try these lighter ones just to match up under my eyes. Maybe this is actually too light. I'm going to do a little mixture of these two to hopefully get to this colour. This is a very, what do I think about all of this? As I say, I'm kind of in the process of considering it all. What I really don't like are AI filters, beauty filters. Filters in general, when they completely change the structure of your face, I don't like. Knowing that they're designed by humans is like, okay, 
silly, but I don't, you know, I still don't like them, but I can see that there's a human hand there. But if we are asking this entity, this thing, to decide what is beautiful, what looks good, how we should look, that terrifies me, it really does. That to me is like entering the kind of Margaret Atwood dystopian universe and I, I really don't like that. I also feel like it will encourage sameness, which we're already seeing anyway in beauty, like lots of filters that make people look identical to other people and that really upsets me and actually really makes me sad because the one thing that I do love about um, beauty is that everyone is different, everyone looks different. So I, I would really be upset if we kind of, everyone thinks they have to look like one thing, and particularly if it's the work of, I don't know, this, who, who, who is it the work of? <laughs> Step four, use the Lisa Eldridge eyeshadow palette in Velvet Myth. It's not actually called Velvet Myth, it's called Myth, but very good. To create a sultry, smoky eye, apply the shimmering champagne shade all over the lid and then add depth by blending the deep brown shade. That is wrong. Hun, you've got this wrong. This is Myth, so pulled out. That is what it's saying is the champagne shade, I guess, mm, pink champagne. And the deep violet maybe thinks that is the brown. Or has it got the name of the palette wrong? And does it mean cinnabar? Because I think that looks more like champagne and that looks more like deep brown. Okay, I'm going to go with what it said, which is the myth palette. And I think maybe, did it look at the image is online and this looks like a light colour, so maybe that is kind of a champagne colour and maybe that does look deep brown. It could be confused for being a deep brown, although we know it's deep violet. So I'm going to do exactly what it said. So for the technique, it's telling me to apply the champagne shade all over the lid and then use the dark brown to define. So I'm going to use my fingers for the lighter shade I'm going to tap this on so it's quite pink and shimmery. I wouldn't call, yeah, we'll call it pink champagne. It says all over the lid and then to apply the neck shade in the socket. So in with the deep violet that the AI thinks is dark brown, but we'll let it off. And just, that's a bit too much. Let me just get a bit off there since it's quite a simple look. Maybe I have to go quite soft with this. So I'm just applying it. It's said to define, so I presume it means in the socket line. Or did it say socket line? It said, um, shimmery shade all over the lid, then add depth by blending the deep brown shade. So add depth. So yes, it does mean the socket line. So we'll do the socket and then a touch along the lash line. I did say to create a sultry, smoky eye. Okay, yeah, I'm not listening to the instructions, so I will do a little bit along the lower lash line and a little bit um, underneath as well. Actually, I just realised the next step, it's telling me to use a liquid liner, so I'm not going to do the top, I'm just going to smoke the lower lash line. And maybe just those edges. It's interesting that it described it as a sultry smoky eye. I don't think that's a 
description or something that I've ever said in my videos before, or even in my kind of interviews online that it could have pulled from. I mean, I know it's the thing to say, but it's just not, it's not in my idiom, so I don't know where that's come from. Oh, to finish off the eyes, I missed this bit. It says, then use the matte black in the palette. Well, there isn't a matte black in this palette, so it'd have to be the same dark shade. And it says to go along the lash line and to create a winged effect. So I'm gonna just start to very softly, since we're going for this soft, sultry eye, I'm gonna go softly along. Then when I get to this outer edge, I'm just gonna wing up a little bit there. Like that. Next step, apply Lisa Eldridge Precision Ink Liner in gloss, whatever that is, to create a thin precise line along your upper lash line. Make sure to keep the line close to the lashes for a natural look. Okay, good. So I am going to use liquid liner um, as instructed, just very, very close to my lashes. All the way along. I'm kind of liking this eye look. I think it's quite interesting. And that is the end of the eye look. That is the end of step five, which means that we don't have any mascara or curling of eyelashes. It's creating a look for Lisa Eldridge. It searched the internet. It knows that I always curl my eyelashes. This is written all over and it's in every single tutorial. I've done so many interviews about it and it's telling me no mascara and no eyelash curling. Okay, so this is, I feel like this is a decision on its behalf. It has got me to double line so that I have got definition around my eyes. So either this is predicting a kind of return to a medieval look where no one really emphasized the eyelashes or it means that in the future, maybe it thinks everyone's gonna have eyelash extensions, so we're not gonna wear mascara anymore. But interesting, I mean, I was just loving this eye look and thinking this was actually really good. And now I'm confused, to be honest, very confused. Step six, this is applying the blush. Ha ha, hold on, no eyebrows, nothing in the eyebrows. Okay, this is going back to like the 90s and probably the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, when eyebrows were not a thing, as in a big thing. Okay, so it is deciding that eyebrows are not a thing, not for this look, so we're moving straight on to blush, and it's saying to apply the Lisa Eldridge Enlivening Blush in Pink Soap, love that colour, on the apples of your cheeks using a blush brush, Blend it out towards your temples for a natural flushed look. That sounds nice. I know this isn't in stock at the moment, but it is coming back, I promise you. It's just taking a while. So I'm using this from my kit. And as instructed, using a well, kind of a blush brush, it says to start on the apples of the cheeks and to blend upwards and outwards onto the temples. This is not a look that I would do very often with blush to go up to the temples, but I think if we keep it natural, as it did describe, give it its due, it did say for a naturally flushed look. So let's do temples and keep it soft. Okay, that's nice. Nice colour choice. I think it did mean the, um, it was right about the Myth palette. I think that's the one it chose. I think it just described the colours incorrectly, which actually raises the question, can it see colour? Step seven, highlight the high points, I love that, the high points of your face, such as your cheekbones, brow bone and Cupid's 
Glow with Lisa Eldridge's Elevated Glow Highlighter in Crystal Nebula. So it knows a highlighter when it sees one and it knows where to put it. Interesting. High point to the face. I guess this was all over the internet. So that was easy to come out with. That was easy to find, I should say. Let's pat that in. I didn't say to blend it, but give it the benefit of the doubt there. It knew that, but it didn't mention it. Now, this is the most interesting step, I think. Step eight, apply Lisa Eldred's transparent lip color in Muse. So I think it means the Muse lip gloss all over your lips as a base. So this is like the base coat. I guess it's suggesting it as like a lip balm type thing, which it is because it's a lip treatment. I'm actually going to blot because what it's asking me to do next is really interesting, but I'm going to do a touch of a blot. It didn't say to blot, but what it said next is follow up with Lisa Eldridge plush true velvet lipstick in velvet jazz in the center of your lips to create a gradient effect. Chat GPT, who are you? This is interesting. And then finish the look by using Lisa Eldridge True Velvet, so it's not saying plush True Velvet anymore, lipstick in velvet ribbon on the outer corners of your lips, blending into the velvet jazz for a seamless finish. Wow, okay, that's interesting. I would never do that. This is almost like the creative side of it because I was about to discuss the fact that it's giving me rules and stuff, but it's not having much artistic expression. This I've never done before. I've never seen anyone do this before. So this has actually come up with a creative technique off its own bat. So that's quite phenomenal and really, really interesting. So here's Velvet Jazz. We're gonna apply this just to the center. And we're going to create a gradient effect with this. And then I'm just going to gradiate that out. So applying it on top of the gloss is actually quite a good tip because you're able to really kind of thin it out and you've got something to blend it into that is kind of easy to blend into. So for a gradient lip, this is not a bad tip because I was actually thinking, although I was saying to you before, it's kind of artistic and it's using its own artistic, whatever, if it has it even has that but it doesn't understand the colors. But I kind of think, I don't know, maybe it did understand that it was easier to blend away from um, a matte texture into a gloss. I'm gonna make it a little stronger at the center. Kind of more like the true color. And then again, really blend that out. In with velvet ribbon. Corners of the lips. Hmm. Okay, so I've got the red at the outer edge. I'm gonna buff that into the Muse Jazz Gradient. Oh, it's not making it easy, is it? It's not all about the kind of whack on a lipstick and go. It's being really creative, so it knows well, it knows that I'm a makeup artist because it says I'm a 
renowned makeup artist. So it kind of felt like it had to give me something technical to do, which is interesting. There's one more set of instructions I saw. I hope it's powder, I kind of like it. It's like quite an editorial lip. Interesting, very interesting. I feel like to do it justice, I need to go back in. Tiny bit of jazz in the center. Final thing it says, Overall, the makeup look for Lisa Eldridge features a flawless base, yeah, given but a little bit light, sultry smoky eyes, albeit without any mascara, um, flush cheeks, yep, I'll give you that, and gradient lips, yes, absolutely. It showcased Lisa Eldridge's products and uses techniques that highlight the natural beauty of the face. So, what do we think? Um, it is kind of cool. I wish they'd given me some, a little bit of powder, I have to say. The mascara thing, I don't hate, actually. It's kind of given me an editorial look to the eyes, which I quite like. It may be meant for me to, when it said line close the lashes, maybe it meant for me to go underneath the waterline at the top, which probably would have given it a bit more definition. Um, but I don't hate it. I really, I don't love the base colour. No, because that is, it's dramatic. It's definitely gone more dramatic, but I don't love it. But I do love the lips and I love the way, and I'm actually going to do that. It's said to put the thin layer of gloss on first and then to buff in the velvet matte lips. So that was really, really clever. And I really like the blush as well. The blush is nice and natural. So yeah, do I think it's gonna take the job of makeup artists? Well, I don't think it, I think AI is amazing when you're gonna be able to try on colors and it's gonna look really, really exactly right online. It's gonna be incredible for that. Probably it's gonna be incredible for matching you with foundation online. Do I think that robots will eventually be doing our makeup? Yes, honestly I do. I think that will happen. Will it be good enough? I feel like for magazines, you can already do this. I actually did it during the pandemic where I just retouched all the makeup on to just a, a raw image. So that's kind of already happening, that can happen. And I think there will be something where you put your head in and something and that you just airbrush and robots just do your makeup. Will it completely replace makeup artists? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I would love to hear your opinion on this makeup look, on AI filters and everything I've talked about today. I would love, love, love to hear your comments. So please do let me know. And um, I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you soon.